So this is the script that we should be using to create the virtual machine. And the first thing we need to do is define some parameters that we should be using later on in the script, such as subscription ID, resource group name, and so on. Then we need to connect to Azure. We need to select our Azure subscription using a subscription ID, which can be obtained from the Azure portal. Next, we'll need to create an Azure Snapshot PowerShell object that we can use using the resource group name and snapshot name parameters. Then I'm just going to use a bit of splatting to declare some common parameters, which will be the resource group name and the location. Now, to create a virtual machine from a disk snapshot, you actually need to create a managed disk from the snapshot. So you need to create an Azure disk configuration and you need to specify a location and a resource ID. And then the create option will be copy. So we're going to copy the snapshot to a managed disk. So having created the Azure disk configuration, we can now actually create the managed disk. We're back in the Azure portal, and if we refresh, we can see that the OS disk has been created from the snapshot. Having created the managed disk, we can now start to build our virtual machine. So we need to create a new Azure VM configuration with the name of the VM and a size. And the virtual machine size parameter was defined earlier. Go back up to that location. So the virtual machine size, so you can run the get Azure RM VM size using the location in which you want to create your VM in order to get a list of available virtual machine sizes. And you can see that the list is actually very long. So you need a bit of knowledge of Azure and the various size and specifications that are available. So I quite like the burstable VMs. So I've just chosen the standard B1S. So let's create the configuration. Next thing to do is to add the managed disk to the VM configuration. So that's now been attached. The virtual machine will need a IP address. And so this commandlet will create the IP address and the name parameter here. We're using the virtual machine name and converting that to lowercase and then add in underscore IP in order to create a new name for this resource. The allocation method will be dynamic. So that will just pick up an IP address from Azure dynamically rather than setting a static IP address. And we're using the splatted parameters for the resource group name and the location. So we're back in the Azure portal. And if I refresh now, you can see that a public IP address has been created. So now that we've created a public IP address object, we now need to attach that IP to the virtual machine. So we'll start by getting the virtual network object that existed in the resource group before we started this process. And then we need to create a network interface using the virtual network for the subnet ID parameter and the public IP address from the public IP as your object. And again, we're using the common parameters for the resource group name and the location. And clicking refresh, we can see that a network interface object has now been created in our resource group. We're getting there with the virtual machine configuration. We now need to add the network interface to the virtual machine. We'll use that virtual machine configuration and the common parameters of resource group name and location to actually create a new Azure virtual machine with the managed disk from the snapshot. And it will create a standard storage account and give it a name, uh, which will store the boot diagnostics should we need them. The virtual machine has now been successfully created and we can go over to the Azure portal again and see it. So the new virtual machine has been created and we can see here that it's the standard B1 size that we specified. It has a public IP address 
and it's been created in the resource group and location that would specified in the script. I hope that you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.